Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Safrana Live, and it's time for another daily dose of Phyrexia All Will Be One spoilers. So today, we've only got a couple of days left in spoiler season, but we have some ridiculous cards to talk about. One of the most busted enchantments I've seen in a while, more of the Panharmonicon cycle, which means we should probably jump right into it. Start dogging sweet new Phyrexia All Will Be One cards. Before we do, some quick reminders. Number one, if you need some of these cards, you can snag them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtgoldfish. Number two, to keep up on the latest spoilers throughout the day, you should head on over to mtgpreviews.com. And number three, we also got the Set Booster exclusive cards today, the, the Commander cards, and there's some pretty spicy ones, like a certain new Mythic Mirror. And Tomer covered all of those in his spoiler video over on the MTG Goldfish Commander YouTube. So make sure to head over there and check Check that out after you finish this video. Anyway, let's talk sweet new cards from Phyrexia All Will Be One. First up today, we have the, they said the name of the movie in the movie card of the set. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Let's shave the cat. Oh boy, I usually only get this excited when they say the title of a movie in the movie. The only way for me to solve this crisis is to be Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Oh, that's why they call it that. Well done, wizards. But seriously, the card's kind of busted. All will be one. Five man enchantment says whenever you put one or more counters on a permanent or player, all will be one deals that much damage to target opponent, creature, and opponent controls, or planeswalker and opponent controls. So essentially, if you put a counter on anything, you also get to deal that much damage. And this might not sound that exciting, but when you actually think about how many cards get permanents put on them and how easy it is to put permanents on cards. Cards, this card is very quickly gonna end games once it hits the battlefield in the right deck and there's even some combos that go infinite with it so let's start with standard in standard we've been talking about throughout spoiler season how easy it is to put oil counters on things especially the spell slinger cards like vindictive flames doger mercurial spell dancer they just get an oil counter whenever you cast a nine creature spell if you get out all will be one all you got to do is cast some spells and every spell you cast is going to give oil counters which will also deal that much damage to your opponent or to their stuff there's also cards that just come into play with a bunch of counters like Archfiended Ross, a Valve Spinoderm. They come into play with four oil counters, which means if you got all will be one out, they essentially have a kicker of deal four damage to something, which is kind of ridiculous because these cards are already good. Like these cards are already playable on their own. And when they have a kicker of deal four damage to your opponent's face or snipe a planeswalker, shoot down one of their creatures, they become absurd. And that doesn't even consider planeswalkers. Planeswalkers come into play with a lot of counters on them. Like you play Veroski at full price for six mana it comes in with six counters which means you get six damage wall will be one and then you can proliferate and tick up for loyalty and get even more counters same with this or any other planeswalker so this could be an interesting finisher for a super friends deck you just play it and play and activate your planeswalkers and burns your opponent out of the game plus like shivan devastator a filer vigor gala greeters these are creatures that can put a lot of counters on things picture some sort of mono red counter deck you play all will be one the next turn you shivan devastator x5 you're gonna get five counters so you get five direct damage and then you have a hasty 5-5 five, five flyer or defiler of vigor. You play some green stuff, you put counters on your team. That's so much damage that's being added up. Once you get to older formats, it becomes truly ridiculous. Like Dark Depths comes into play with 10 ice counters on it, which means your land drop, your land drop for the turd deals 10 damage. If you can have two Dark Depths come into play, you just burn your opponent out from a full 20 with all will be one. Or in modern, we've seen Arcbound Ravager, Ozolith X. They get so many counters, it's pretty easy to sack a bunch of stuff, get enough counters on Arcbound Ravager that you burn out your opponent for like eight and then you sack the Ravager and that puts counters on something and the counters go on the Ozolith and that burns your opponent for another 16 and you just win the game on the spot. Is this actually gonna show up in like competitive hardened scales? I mean, it is important to point out, it's a five man enchantment. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that all of a sudden competitive modern hardened scales is gonna drop everything and build around all will be one, but it really does show just how easy it is for 
for this card to straight up kill people either the turn it comes into play or the following turn maybe my favorite way to take advantage of it and oh, it's such a janky plan but we probably got to build this deck because it's really funny is bioessence hydra super friends uh bioessence hydra comes into play and gets a plus one plus one counter for each loyalty counter on planeswalkers you control so you play a bunch of cheap planeswalkers with high loyalty like kiora behemoth back in her comes into play with seven loyalty you add all will be one to the mix and opponents just die your kiora deals seven damage when it comes into play then bio as inside we're gonna get a ton of counters based on the loyalty probably just finishes your opponent off also super hilarious with helix pinnacle helix pinnacles just pay x put x counters on it so that means for every one mana you pay you deal that much damage to something which actually makes a helix pinnacle win much more reasonable especially since it has shroud so you can't kill it because as you're dumping your mana into it you're just shooting down your opponent's board or sniping your opponent's face then there's just full-on infinite combos for the card in commander the easiest infinite combo the red terror the red terror actually a legend from the warhammer 40k decks four mana four three says when a red source you control deals damage to one or more permanents or players put a plus one plus one counter on the red terror so the idea is you play red terror you play all will be one and then you just deal damage to something any amount of damage to anything or put a counter on something and then you start this loop where the red terror gets a plus one plus one counter which will trigger all will be one to snipe your opponent for a damage and then since all will be one's a red source that'll put another counter on the red terror which will trigger all will be one to deal damage back and forth until you burn everyone out you can even do this in modern with quest of the pure flame quest of the pure flame one mana gem it says when is source you control deals damage to an opponent put that many quest counters on it and then you can remove four quest counters double your damage whatever you don't even want to do that though you just play quest of the pure flame and then you play all will be one and then deal some amount of damage and you start that same loop quest of the pure flame is going to get a counter which will trigger all will be one to deal damage which will trigger quest of pure flame to get a counter and then damage from all will be one until your opponent's dead also in commander kind of hilarious with vaccine puzzle box it's vaccine puzzle box three mana mana rocks with a bunch of ups side and twist but the big thing is when you tap it add a mana you also roll a d20 and then you put that many counters on it equal to your die roll so this means every time you tap vaccine puzzle box you're gonna get what, an average of like 10 damage or something 10.5 something like that so essentially every time you roll your dice you're just gonna kill something and you're already playing a three mana mana rock so if you're playing a ob1 consider cards like vaccine puzzle box because they're really gonna power up this card obviously absurd with doubling seasons and vorin clexes you're just getting twice as many counters in commander i would consider playing this in essentially any plus one plus one counter deck that has red mana halan and alina blaster halar animar i don't care this card is absolutely ridiculous so all will be one the card is kind of just absurd it is so powerful so good at killing people yes the only thing is it is a five mana enchantment so let me make that clear i'm not saying this is gonna break all the constructed formats or anything like that because it is five mana it's ridiculously powerful but you need to be in a specific deck have a specific plan and it does cost five mana but when you think about everything that this card can do there are so many possibilities including many that just end the game right away so even though it's five mana i think there's got to be a role for this card somewhere because it is just so strong and flashy and spectacular we also got a new black mythic in drivnod carnage dominus so this is the black member of the panharmonicon cycle five mana for a legendary phyrexian horror it's an eight three it says if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control the trigger trigger it in additional time and then you pay two phyrexian black mana exile three creature cards from your graveyard and put an indestructibility counter on it so Drivnod the card's pretty sweet uh, it's the third member we've seen of this cycle we got the white one doubling tokens the blue one doubling proliferate now the black one doubling up death triggers which essentially makes it a tisa car love um, almost exactly tisa car love except it's mono black and you almost get yargle stats eight three is really aggressive interesting stats yargle is a really powerful card like literally it has a ton of power the problem is it only has three toughness so it dies to pretty much everything trades down in combat a lot Drivnod is really exciting because of its body because of the indestructible mode it's pretty easy especially in a deck that's going to be playing Drivnod and having things die to get three creatures in your graveyard and you can just play Drivnod for five mana immediately pay four life for that two Phyrexian black mana get the indestructibility counter on it and then you're pretty free to swing in and just kill your opponent with this card really really quickly even discounting its panharmonicon mode so in standard there's a few 
few cool things to do with this card. One is the dragons from Kamigawa have really strong death triggers, like doubling up your Atsushis or Aos or Chunjis. Gonna close out the game really quickly. Also really sweet with Rotodropic. We were talking the other day about how I want to build Rotodropic with Mondrak to double up the tokens that Rotodropic makes. Well, Drivnod kind of does the same thing. It also doubles up the tokens because it's a death trigger. So if you get all of these going, it's going to be ridiculous. You have one AO die or one Juji die and one Itsushi die, and you're probably just going to win the game from the triggers. It's going to be absolutely absurd. Of course, it is a pile of four and five drops. So I have no idea how we actually make this curve work in a functional way, but good Lord, when we go off, it's going to be absurd. Also, maybe there's some weird aggro deck like Garna and Ellis Core have these damage triggers when your creatures die that maybe you add those all together and have some stuff die and you just burn your opponent out of the game in older formats most specifically commander pretty much anything you do with tisa karlov you can drew with drift nod so it's going to be really good with blood artist effects like zulaport cutthroat pitiless plunder for double treasures things that trigger to draw you cards when you die like grim horror specs and it's also important to know that the way it's worded which is actually the same as tisa karlov but it works when any of your permanents trigger because of a creature drawing. So if you have a creature die and you have a grave pack, which when a creature dies, each opponent has to sack a creature, you're going to double trigger your grave pack. You're a dictate of your bow. So you get double counters on your spawning pit. So keep that in mind as well. There's not a ton of shenanigans for non-creature permanents that trigger when one of your creatures die, but there are a few out there. So Drivnod, I mean, the card's pretty sweet. I will say in some ways, it's not super unique because we already have Tisa Car Love, so we kind of know the shenanigans that work with an effect like this compared to like the blue member of the cycle, which doubles up Proliferate, which is something brand new that we've never seen before. But still, the card's got really interesting stats. It's an 8-3 for 5. It's got a powerful ability, and it can protect itself with the indestructibility mode. So, I don't know. I'm in like Panharmonica and Overload mode right now. I want to build around all these cards so much in so many formats, so I'm just like super excited. I think Driven Nod might be the one I'm least excited about currently, but that doesn't mean I'm not excited about it. They're all like S tiers. This one just happens to be slightly lower S tier than the other ones we've seen so far, but another Panharmonic on the card is so, so sweet. Moving into the realm of rares, we got a weird one in Rhea Ivor, Bane of Bladehold. So four mana, Orzhov Legendary Phyrexian Knight. It's a three, four with battle cry. So when it attacks, your other attacking creatures get plus one, plus zero, pretty sure this is the only card with battle crying this set so kind of interesting to see this random mechanic pop up and it says oh, what a weird ability at the beginning of combat on your turn the next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players as combat prevent that damage if damage is prevented this way create that many one one colorless phyrexian my artifact creature tokens with toxic one in this creature camp block so reivor it's a callback to Hero of Bladehold. It's Hero of Bladehold with a really weird twist. It's like delayed gratification, Hero of Bladehold. Hero of Bladehold, same stats, uh, same mana cost, except it's mono white, same mana value, uh, even very similar creature type. It's got Battle Cry. The difference of Hero of Bladehold is when it attacks, it makes two one ones that are tapped and attacking, and then you Battle Cry, so they're essentially two ones. So it adds a lot of power to the battlefield. Rhea Ivor doesn't do that. Rhea Ivor actually prevents the damage of one of your creatures for the first turn, but your reward is you're going to make some might tokens for the following turn. So essentially you're kind of the best way to think about this, I think, is Rhea Ivor gives one of your creatures double strike, but it can't deal damage until the following turn, and things can go really wrong in between those turns. Removal cells, sweepers, your opponent wins the game. So essentially, you're not dealing the damage right away with the promise of getting more damage in the future because you prevented your own damage. Whether or not that's actually going to be worth it, I kind of have my doubts. So I think the most powerful thing to do with Reivor is just playing a token deck, not to make might tokens. <laughs> you hopefully will not be using that ability too much, but just as a battle cry creature, like uh, with your rabble rousings and jet mirrors and resolute reinforcements, you go really wide, and then all of a sudden your Reivor is just making your creatures even bigger, forcing through that last bit of damage to close out the game. Also works well with Ishin, double up the battle cry trigger, get twice as much pumping on your creatures. On the other hand, Think about some of the most popular three drops in standard in the Orzhov colors, Phyrexian, Flash Gorger, Gix, Adeline. Imagine you're playing a game of standard. On turn three, you drop a Adeline or a Flesh Gorger. On turn four, you play Rhea Ivor. You go to combat. 
do you really want to target your Phyrexian Flesh Gorger or Adeline and prevent their damage for the turn? Uh, which can be three or four, maybe even more, depending on Adeline going off. Uh, but it can be a big chunk of damage. Do you really want to prevent that damage? in hopes that the might tokens that you make will deal even more damage the following turn and your opponent uh, doesn't kill your Rhea Ivor and they don't wrath your board. If you think about it, let's say you prevent the damage of a 3-3, you're gonna get three 1-1 one, one might tokens and then in theory, you get twice as much damage the following turn because you battle cry with Rhea Ivor, all those 1-1s one become 2-1s, so your three damage prevented ends up being six damage in the future. You double it up, but there's just so many ways that this can go wrong I really doubt there's going to be too many situations where I'm going to take and prevent the damage of my own creature in hopes of getting those might tokens, especially since I'm not very impressed by the might tokens. They can't even block. They can't even block. It's such a huge drawback. So Ivor, it's an interesting card. I like the callback to Hero Bladehold, but my guess is the card is kind of unplayed in standard and in other formats. Two other things I want to mention about this card, just weird quirks. One is the wording's just really odd. The next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players this combat, how does one creature deal damage to one or more players in one combat? It's not even the same turn, so it's not like extra combat steps or something. So I don't know if you have an idea why it's worded that way. I've seen speculation that it's about the new battle card type that we haven't seen. Maybe this interacts with that in some way. I've seen some people say it's just for like weird damage prevention effects or redirection effects like harm's way. I got no idea, but the wording definitely stuck out. The other thing I wanted to mention, if you read the wording carefully, is it is possible that Rhea Ivor can keep you from winning the game. Its ability is not a May ability. At the beginning of combat on your turn, the next time target creature would yield combat damage, there's no May. You may target a creature. You have to target a creature. So what this means is in theory, if you somehow ended up on a board state where your only creature is rear Ivor and your opponent has no creatures and your opponent's at like two life, you would have to target your own rear Ivor with its ability and then the damage would be prevented and your opponent would survive the turn and undoubtedly draw a farewell and wrath your board and you'd go on to lose which is really funny in most scenarios it's fine because you can always target one of your opponent's creatures and it essentially just does nothing because your opponent's not going to be dealing combat damage to you during that combat so you can just target one of your opponent's creatures you can target one of your summoning sick creatures but it is worth keeping in mind that you must target something with that ability there's no may there so Rhea Ivor it is a weird card, a really weird card. Maybe I'm missing something about it. Maybe you double strike the creature with the damage being prevented, but if you're doing that, shouldn't you just deal the damage? I don't even know anymore with this card. So if you well, let me know what I'm missing, the card is interesting, it's super weird, but ah, it seems bad to me, but maybe I'm missing something important about it. We also got the return of everyone's favorite troll, Thrun, is Thrun Breaker of Silence, and new Thrun actually seems pretty good. Five mana, five, five, legendary troll shaman. Thrun can't be countered. It has trample. It can't be the target of non-green spells your opponents control or abilities from non-green sources. And as long as it's your turn, Thrun has indestructible. So Thrun Breaker of Silence, Compares to Old Thrun, in some ways, it's actually more powerful than Old Thrun. The can't be the target of non-green spells and sources from your opponents is very close to Hexproof. I guess there's some chance that you get caught in a fight spell or something, but in reality, it is ridiculously hard for any deck to actually kill this with targeted removal, which makes Thrun really hard to deal with. You can't counter it. You can't kill it with targeted removal. If you want to get rid of it, you pretty much need to have like some sort of Wrath or Edict or Sweeper. It's Protection mode is literally Gaia's Revenge. Gaia's Revenge, a ton of mana, but it is really hard to actually kill. Thrawn is even harder to kill in some ways because if it's your turn, it has Indestructible. So if you're playing offense, you can feel free to swing into that Death Touching Shield or whatever and nothing's going to happen. So how do you actually deal with Thrawn? The answer is your opponent's pretty much got to have an Edict and you not have another creature or they have to have something like Farewell, a full on sweeper because Thrawn is only Indestructible during your turn if your opponent casts a Wrath during their their turn Thrun's not indestructible and it's gonna go away plus farewell would get around that anyway so I actually think that Thrun 
has potential to be a very good card. This is one of the best cards to put a Sword of Forge and Frontier on. It's a great card to load up with auras. We got Blanchwood Armor in Standard. We got Audacity. Maybe there's some sort of mono green aura deck or two color aura deck. Maybe there's a sword deck for it, an equipment deck for it. It's just such a great creature to load up and go Voltron with because it's so hard for most decks to deal with. And then you just trample over and hit your opponent and get all your triggers and win the game. There is some question as to whether Tyrannix Rex does something similar but better. But you can just play them both. Tyrannix Rex is seven mana. Thrawn's only five, so they kind of curve into each other. So you can see the makings of a really hard to interact with mono green style deck in standard with Thrawn and Tyrannix Rex and maybe some equipment or some auras or just other good green threats that's really going to make it hard to interact with with, with your removal because most of their stuff has this huge ward number or Thrawn's really hard to get through abilities. So Thrawn Breaker of Silence seems like at a minimum a great control breaker sideboard card for standard. Uh, if you listen to the, the Goldfish podcast today ago, Krim was really down on Tyrannus Rex because they're like, oh, I'm just going to void rend it to get around the ward. Well, you can't void rend a Thrun. Thrun's protection is not like ward. It doesn't care about stuff that can't be countered or whatever. It gets around pretty much all of it. So I think Thrun, worst case, if a control deck's big and standard, this is a shifting Ceratops, a carnage tyrant, a OG Thrun that you bring and direct the control deck. Best case, I could see this being in the main deck and some sort of really hard to interact with mono green deck in standard. We also got another rare sphere land in Mirix. So Mirix comes into play untapped. It taps to make a colorless. It taps to make a mana of any color, but only on the turn that Mirix came into play. And then you can pay three and tap it to make a 1-1 Phyrexian Might Artifact Creature Token with Toxic 1 and this creature can't block. So Mirix, I'm actually kind of man this card. If you think about it, its mana fixing ability is kind of like crumbling vestige. You get this one turn of fixing and then a colorless land. And then it's kind of like a castle Larden Vale or something. The problem is the might token just isn't very good. If you think about castle Arden Vale or other decks that play lands that make one, one tokens, they're usually pretty defensive. Like they're not a great clock, but you make your one, one. So you can chump block your opponent's big thing while you're waiting to find your wrath, your removal spell or something, a land that makes a one, one that can't block just really doesn't excite me. I guess you can argue that it three mana plus tapping Murex, it's kind of costed pretty fairly, but the creature it makes, I don't know. Maybe I'm underrating these mites. Every time I see a card that makes the mites though, the this creature can't block thing just always comes back to make me think the card's not really that powerful. That said, in a deck that is trying to poison out the opponent, then this goes way up in value. If you're trying to win with poison, you're probably being aggro anyway. And then this is just a repeatable way to add a toxic creature to the battlefield. So if you're like, like Selesnia Toxic, as Skrelv and Skrelv's Ive and Bloated Contaminator, Tyrannus Rex, then I think that Mirex is probably very good. But don't think of it like a Castle Arden Veil that you're going to play in some control deck and use to stay alive because it's just not going to work that way. So it's like this weird creature producing land, but really, in my opinion, only for a toxic deck or a very aggressive deck. So Mirex, I think it's got a roll, but a pretty narrow one for those toxic decks, rather than being a land that you play in most decks. We also got a new blue legend in Unticus Grand Meta Tech. So three mana, two, four, legendary artifact creature. It's a Phyrexian Videlkin. Says other blue creatures you control have. Whenever this creature becomes tapped, draw a card, then discard a card. Other artifact creatures you control, you get plus one, plus one. And then for a Phyrexian blue mana, you can turn a creature you control into a blue artifact in addition to its other colors and types. Can only do it as a sorcery. So Unticus pretty much a callback to Grand Architect. Very similar. I think it actually might be the same exact character. Does a lot of similar things, kind of twisted around in reverse, but it's a three drop that cares about blue creatures and artifact creatures, and Unicus can do some pretty sweet things. So on level one, it's a Chief of the Foundry. Like, if you're some sort of artifact aggro deck, you can play this, and it's probably going to be pretty good. Is it three mana lord for your Ornithopters and Men Knights and whatever artifact creatures you're playing? Uh, you also get the upside that Unicus itself is an artifact, which is a nice little bonus 
as compared to like Grand Architect, which was not an artifact creature. There's also some combos here. The when your blue creatures become tapped, you get to loot mode, does some really interesting things. So you can just play it for value, obviously. Play some blue things or turn your creatures into blue creatures and then do some looting to get rid of extra lands or whatever. But probably the most spectacular way to play this card and something I think will show up in Commander is a Feto Alchemist combo. So a Feto Alchemist is this blue two drop that says tap to untap target artifact or creature. Well, the trick is it can target itself. So if you have Untikus in a Feto Alchemist, you just, a Feto Alchemist, uh, tap it to untap itself and loot and do it again and do it again and do it again. And you just loot through your entire deck until you find Thassa's Oracle or Laboratory Maniac and win the game. And I think that this is just a turn three kill in Commander. Like if you go a Feto Alchemist on turn two into Untikus on turn three, you should just win the game because as you loot through your deck, you should be able to find a Lotus Petal or at least some two sources of blue mana that you can play that are not your land drops for the turn to play the Thassa's Oracle and actually win the game on the spot. So we'll have to see. There's also a much more trolly way to pull off the combo, which makes it more exciting in my opinion. Uh, so the same combo of having a blue creature that can tap and untap to loot through your deck and win with Thassa's Oracle, you can do this with Clever Conjurer and a card that puts a name and a card that puts a name sticker on Clever Conjure. So Clever Conjure, it's a three mana two three. It has an ability that says tap it to untap target permanent not named Clever Conjure. So if we pay a ball arena or a glitter fitter or some other card that can put a name sticker on Clever Conjure and change its name to, I don't even know, Clever Conjure Banana or whatever, then it's not named Clever Conjure. And that same combo, like a Feto Alchemist, actually can work. So you can see if you really built around this, this is a legitimately scary combo commander. Throw in some name stickers, Clever Conjure, throw in the Feto Alchemist, and next thing you know, you're just winning super 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 quickly with Thassa's Oracle. Also, if you want to play this fairly, pretty good with vehicles. Like vehicles give you another way to tap your blue creatures without having to send them in combat. So it's a great way to loot a bunch. Your Mind Link Max and Reckoner Bank Busters and just tap your blue creatures to crew them and get to loot. I use the Untigus to crew them and you get to loot. So that's pretty nice. Could also see it showing up in some sort of affinity style deck. As I mentioned before, being a artifact creature itself, really helpful here compared to Grand Architect, which was a little awkward if you're playing an affinity style deck, there's a huge cost to playing non-artifacts because you really want everything to be an artifact for affinity purposes. Onikus actually gets around that hurdle. So Onikus, to me, this mostly looks like a ridiculous combo commander, but I mean, a three mana two four is not bad. It's Lord ability is pretty good. Incidental looting is pretty powerful. So maybe there's some sort of like artifact aggro deck or blue vehicle deck that can take advantage of it in a format like standard. In the realm of lower rarity cards, couple worth mentioning a uh, rebel salvo seems like a pretty important standard removal spell for red decks three mana instant has affinity for equipment so one last to cast for each equipment you control five damage to a creature planeswalker that permanent loses indestructible until end of turn so right now standard players red players are playing rending flame pretty heavily because it deals with shielder and shielder just wrecks red decks rebel salvo is essentially just a strict upgrade like you get the upside of if you have an equipment it's going to be cheaper if you have two equipment it's one mana for five damage which is great then you also get the little upside of maybe indestructibility mattering in some cases kind of matters with the new like pseudo gods we're getting the mythic panharmonicon cycle from phyrexia all will be one so i expect rebel salvo to just be a staple removal spell in standard you can play it in non-equipment deck as a upgraded rending flame and then in equipment deck it becomes way above the curve we also got a common land cycle that I wanted to mention because they're spheres. There's some cards in the set that care about spheres. The common cycle comes into play tapped. They're spheres. They had one color of mana and you can pay two mana and tap them and sacrifice them to draw a card. So these are kind of like cycling lands that cycle from the battlefield. I would be surprised if we saw them a ton in any format, but they could be in the conversation for like monocolor decks in standard, maybe some budget monocolor decks in commander where they kind of work like the two mana cycling lands, but you get them on the battlefield first. In the world of lower rarity cards, we got a new three mana mana rock in Phyrexian Atlas. So three mana, taps to add a mana of any color, and then corrupted. When it becomes tapped, each opponent who has three or more poison counters loses a life. So I want to mention this for, well, two reasons. One is the art's really sweet. So much good art in this set. Number two is 
I'm not a believer that three mana mana rocks are unplayable in Commander. I know that's been kind of a popular take recently. I don't believe that myself. What I do believe is three mana mana rocks need significant upside to be playable. And I don't think Phyrexian Atlas has enough upside. Even if you're playing a Poison deck, even if you're playing a Corrupted deck, I don't think I would play this card. The upside of making your opponents lose a life, maybe if they're halfway poisoned, just doesn't seem that much compared to Celestis or even like dark stealing it being indestructible so i'm going to say this one is unplayable not because it's three mana but because it doesn't have enough upside to justify being three mana we also got a card that i think people are kind of sleeping on this card seems kind of busted to me in vat of rebirth so one mana black artifact it says whenever another artifact or creature you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield put an oil counter on it then pay three mana remove four oil counters from it reanimate a creature return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield so essentially Actually, repeatable three mana reanimation it is only a sorcery speed but you need to be able to get oil counters on it and when I first read this card what jumped out to me is this card does not say non-token artifact or creature which means this card actually is very strong think about standard you got cards like fable the mirror breaker making treasure tokens blood tithe harvester making blood tokens these tokens going to the graveyard are going to add oil counters to Vatary Birth along with your creatures dying, which means in a deck that can make treasures or blood or these artifact tokens, it seems pretty easy to turn this on maybe every other turn, in some decks maybe even every single turn. And when this is pretty consistently three mana reanimate something, that's really strong. You don't gotta exile the creature or do anything weird like that. Like you can keep reanimating the same creature if it dies. So I think Vatary Birth might actually be pretty constructed playable. Also seems pretty sweet for treasure or sacrifice or clue commander decks like Prospero, Zeotora, treasure decks. You get so many treasures in these decks. They're going to get so many oil counters. It's going to be super simple to be reanimating something all the time. Maybe Corvald really good at sacrificing things. Eloise has the combo that essentially has infinite clue tokens going to the graveyard, which would be infinite oil counters on battery birth. So even though this is a random uncommon, because it doesn't say non-token, I actually think this could be a pretty strong card in standard, maybe even in Pioneer or Modern, in definitely in commander we also got an interesting new red sorcery a nahiri sacrifice so two mana sorcery is an additional cost to cast this spell sack an artifact or creature with mana value of x and then it deals x damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures so what i'm envisioning with this is this could be like a sideboard card for some sort of affinity deck uh, affinity really good at getting high mana value permanents on the battlefield on the table like mirror enforcer or thought monitor you're casting these often for free or for one mana but their mana value seven which means this could be a really interesting sweeper almost one-sided sweeper a plague wind coming out of your sideboard in an affinity style deck or maybe some sort of galta deck any deck that can cheat high mana value permanence into play this is going to be in the conversation because if your mana value is high enough this can just wrath away your opponent's entire board finally we got a bunch more lower rarity toxic stuff some of it probably kind of playable if you're a toxic deck like pestilent siphoner two mana one one flying toxic one kind of like a plague stinger that doesn't work with pump spells plague nurse is also kind of cool probably mostly for limited but it gives all of your toxic creatures for three mana an additional toxic one which means all of a sudden your pestilent siphoner is hitting for two toxic a turn because toxic stacks so if you're trying to build toxic and limited or maybe even in constructed these cards could show up just because they have that mechanic we also got a couple of interesting counter spells so reject imperfection it's a cancel, three mana, counter, whatever, but it does have an interesting upside. If this spell's mana value that you countered was three or less, you get to proliferate. Yeah, I mean, cancel with the sets mechanic. We get almost every single set. These cards occasionally end up being kind of playable in standard. So yeah, if you're a proliferate deck, this seems reasonable. And then bring the ending. This one's very interesting to me. So two mana, instant, counter target spell, unless it's controller pays two. We've seen this exact same text not be playable in the past. Like the mana leak, but you only got to pay two. It just isn't good enough in the late game. So that part doesn't make me too excited. However, it also has corrupted and it just straight up counters a spell if the opponent has three or more poison counters and that part's really good like this is an upgraded counter spell because there's only one blue mana if you can corrupt your opponent so i think this one i wouldn't play it in a generic deck but if you're a deck that can corrupt your opponent get those three poison counters on them this could actually be a very effective counter spell 
and standard at a minimum, and we'll have to see, like, maybe could even break into older formats, probably not modern, but if there's some sort of toxic deck in Pioneer, or in Historic, or in Explorer, this could be in the conversation there as well. Finally today, we got a bunch of other lower rarity stuff, stuff that probably isn't gonna make it in Constructed, or be like role players in Constructed, but definitely gonna have a role in Limited, and some pretty sweet designs, like against all odds, floor mana and sorcery speed means it's probably too slow, but blink something and decide essentially sun titan something that's kind of a cute little value card so definitely keep these cards in mind mostly for limited but who knows maybe they show up a bit in constructed as well and you can check them all out over at mtgpreviews.com anyway that brings us to the end of our daily phyrexia all will be one spoilers for today so what do you think? What do you hype for? What about our new Black Tisa Karlov Panharmonicon? What about All Will Be One? What other crazy combos are there for that card? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more Phyrexia All Will Be One spoilers. So until then, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.